<laughs> Hello again, everyone. Todd Struch, the horror nerd here at Scares That Care Charity Weekend Number 6 in Williamsburg, Virginia. And I have the distinct honor of sitting here with one of the stars of my all-time favorite film, The Shawshank Redemption, Boggs himself, Mr. Mark Ralston. Mark, how are you? I'm doing great, Todd. Thanks very much. Good. Thank you for uh, spending a few minutes with us today. My absolute pleasure. This is a great event, and it's uh, an event for a real worthy cause, so I'm happy to be here. When we're happy to have you. Is this your first Scares the Care experience? My very, very first, yeah. And it's been absolutely lovely. We're here on the final day, and I think everyone had a good time. Yeah. We did. We have a. We had a blast. I see a lot of zombies uh, stumbling around the convention today. Yeah, last night must have been a little wild. There's some dazed looks in this room. Yeah, a little bit. Um, okay, so I wasn't kidding when I said Shawshank is my favorite film of all time. Uh, you play a very unsavory character. As an actor, how do you get yourself into that mindset, into a place like that, to play someone that villainous, if you will? Yeah, you know, um, <clears throat> the important thing is when for actors is, is that they actually love their character no matter how despicable they are. So for me, when I was approaching the role, I mean, on the surface, people would say that Boggs was, that it was about sex, and it's not. You know. Boggs is, it's all about power and his control of people, um, however twisted that is. But the truth is, is like you have to really delve into and love the character for who they are and from their perspective. So again, it's, it's not the easiest of things, but you know, I've, I've trained myself over time. You know, I'm a classically trained actor and so not only do I train myself to prepare to jump into the role, but equally, when they say rap for the evening, I shut it off and I go home to my family and I me, trust me, I'm not, I'm not Boggs at home, only on screen. So they have, it's basically like that. Fantastic, because I was going to ask you about that. Like, how how, how long do you, does it take you to decompress after you walk off set? Well, yeah, it, uh, not not very long, but you know, but it, but it's true. If you've if you've done a full day, oftentimes you come off the set and you're exhilarated. Um, so I come home and I, and I can't go to sleep right away because even though I might be exhausted, because you're just exhilarated by the day's work. The biggest thing is when the movie is done because you've been on a film for a couple months and doing this role day to day and uh, you really kind of mourn the loss of the character. But uh, back when I was doing Aliens, because um, I had to bulk up for that film, they had me drinking some crazy amino acid drink and I came home one evening and my metabolism was running crazy so I wanted to eat all the time. And I was working out like six hours a day as well. So I remember I came home once and I had this like frown on my face only because I was hungry. And my, my wife said to me, oh, no, no, no. Take it right outside. She said, leave it at the door and then you can come back in. And, I, and that was like a real lesson for me. It's like, I got to remember, you know, I'm coming home to family that aren't of my film world. So, yeah. But so, yeah. Not so much day-to-day -day decompression. Um, certainly after a long day's work, you want a nice glass of wine, for sure. I can, I can totally, totally appreciate that. So, Mark, you mentioned Aliens, another huge, iconic film. Does it ever surprise you that um, some of these films have been out for 20, 30, almost 40 years now? That it ever surprise you that all these fans still come to line up to get your autograph, take your picture, and talk to you about these films? Absolutely. I mean, from my own experience uh, with both films, I had no idea that they would become what they've become. Now, you know, Shawshank and Aliens both, when I first read the scripts, I mean, they jumped off the page and I knew they were great scripts. Um, but, like with Aliens, like, Bill Paxton kept pe pestering me, saying, dude, this is going to be huge. And I was like, really, Bill? Is it really going to be? He's like, because I was living in England at the time. He was saying, no, you got to come over, Mark. I'm telling you, man, you don't want to miss it. And then sure enough, I mean, now you have something like Aliens, which stands up to this day as a Shawshank. Uh, and it really is, hey, hey, we're filming here. We're filming. 
Jeez, quiet. Um, so, uh, as with aliens, you know, Jim Cameron is an absolute genius, and you watch this movie, and there's not a single frame of aliens or Shawshank that you that you go, eh, it's not so great. These are great filmmakers, great films, and uh, I'm really lucky to be a part of them. That's awesome. And you're right. They do stand the test of time. A lot of films from that era maybe don't age so well, but these do. And Shawshank is one of those movies where if I'm flipping channels and it's on, no matter where it is in the film, I have to watch it until the end. I, I know, I know, I know. I'm, I'm sworn off it now. I, I will never watch it again I, I, because of the same thing. I'd be flicking through the channels and I'd catch a scene and then I'd end up watching it to the end. And my wife would come in the room and she'd go, Oh my God, are you watching this again? And I go, I can't help it. I saw one scene, it sucked me in. So the last time I saw it was like our 20th anniversary. We saw it at the Director's Guild. So it was the big screen, the sound was perfect. I was with all the original cast members and I, and I told my wife after, I said, you know, I'm never gonna better this viewing. So I have watched it for the last time, but uh, what, but what a movie, what, what, a, what a movie. And interesting, like with Aliens, there's nothing that was left on the floor or anything I lament about the film. There were things in Shawshank that were actually sadly cut out of the film that in retrospect would have made the film even better if you can imagine that. Wow, that's hard to picture. Well, there is one shot and I'll explain it really quickly. So, you know, when Andy comes out, you know, the poster shot when he's out in the, in the stream and it's pouring rain and he does this, which is an iconic moment. Well, in the actual script, he started to run back toward the prison. And the audience would naturally go, oh my God, what are you doing? Why are you going, no, wrong way, wrong way, dude. The truth was, in the script, he runs back toward the prison and the audience would be like choking to death. And they had a real steam locomotive, a vintage locomotive already there ready to come down the track and Andy was going to hop on the train and then go to the next town. Ah, okay. And then the audience would go, oh my God, this guy had this thought out to the nth degree. Sadly, that bit of the film was cut for money and time because Frank was a first-time director and the studio, we were a couple days behind and they made him cut stuff. And the other thing that was cut was Bog's demise was that I was uh, beaten up by the guards and then they tossed me over the, the tier. And there was this shot where I was gonna be hurtling toward the ground and that's why Boggs never walked again. Ah, okay, so we don't see that, okay. Yeah, so, and I was all prepared. I was gonna get in a harness, I'd be hung from a wire, they'd have another wire and they'd run the camera up the wire at me and it would be like a false perspective. It would seem as if I'm falling down. In fact, the camera's running toward me. Wow. But, but that was cut too. But, um, but hey, the film still works and it's, it's amazing. Absolutely. Like I said, it, my, my favorite film of all time, um, and, I, and I never get tired of it. So so one last thing I do want to talk to you about, because as I have walking around the convention, I think literally everybody here has been in Star Trek in one <laughs> incarnation or another. So yeah. if you don't mind, we'll grab, uh, we'll grab your picture I'm here. Right? A little bit younger. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> we all are. So... Um, how did that come about? Is Star Trek something you had always wanted to work on, or is it, hey, there's this role came up, uh, do you want to no, do you want to go for it? The Star Trek franchise is very, very interesting because I auditioned for Star Trek probably a dozen times and never got cast. So when this role came up, I said to my then agent, I was like, look, come on, they, they, they don't, they're not interested in me. Like, I've been there 12 times, never got a role. And I went anyway, and uh, luckily to have been a part of, again, an iconic franchise. But uh, they were very, it was a tough show to get into. And um, I'm glad I finally broke through. Um, it's a bit of history. My role is actually in the Star Trek Encyclopedia, which I had no Excellent. <laughs> yeah, I had no idea until a fan showed me, so I'm 
I'm chuffed to have been a part of it. Yeah. And uh, what are you up to these days? How can, you know, what are you working on now? And how can the fans uh, find out about it and follow along? Yeah, great. Uh, you know, I'm, I do an awful lot of voice work. So I, I feature on uh, the DreamWorks series Voltron. I'm on the series uh, Young Justice. I play Lex Luthor. Um, I'm also uh, reoccurring on the Amazon series Bosch. I play Lieutenant Thorne, aptly uh, named because I'm a pain in the ass. And the uh, biggest thing is, is November 8th, Midway, Roland Emmerich's masterpiece. It's a World War II film, but trust me, the film hits on every level. I think it's going to be a blockbuster, so be on the lookout for that. Midway, it's going to be something else. If, in fact, my track record of reading scripts, and when I read them, I go, oh, this one's going to be good. This is the one. Yeah. Well, it, it happens like for me like every seven to ten years. You know, it's like I'll have like Aliens was the first, Shawshank, then The Departed, and now Midway. So it's like that's like the breadth of my career, like almost 40 some years. Very cool. Mark, thank you so much for giving us a few minutes and for the insights into your career. I wish you much success. And thanks again for being here at Scares That Care Charity Weekend 6. Hey, you're a really nice guy and you're not really a nerd. Oh. Hey, I wear my nerd flag proudly. It's okay to call me that. Okay. <laughs> it is. Thanks again, Mark Ralston, everybody, here at Scares That Care Charity Weekend 6, Williamsburg, Virginia. We'll see all of you in the next interview. Sweet.